Even though Senran Kagura Burst Renewal came out on PC and PS4 earlier in the year, I still haven't added the limited edition to my collection. I did a review of the PC version in March, but now I can comment on the PS4 game as well. So what we're going to do is take a look at the limited edition and compare the PS4 and PC versions. If you don't want to bother watching the unboxing and want to skip ahead to the graphics comparison, just go to the timecode you see on the screen. This is the North American limited edition. Well, one of them. This one's the tailor-made edition. The other one is the at the seams edition, which has chibi rubber keychain things. Other than that, they're the same and contain the same things. The at the seams edition is quite expensive now, but the one I have was still in stock at a number of retailers and crucially on clearance during Black Friday. I got it at Amazon, and despite being unceremoniously dumped into a giant padded envelope together with a Roco Streaming Stick Plus, it somehow survived without any real damage. The corners are a bit rounded on one side, but overall it's good. I do like the level of consistency of the North American LEs. Every 3D hack and slash game in the series has this silvery chrome look. The spin-offs are all different so far. Deep Crimson came in a smaller box and didn't have the chrome effect. Peach Beach Splash is mostly blue and has a matte finish. While the Bon Appetit LE from Limited Run Games is yellow and from what I can tell, not shiny. Since my copy of Bon Appetit went missing in the mail, I can't say for sure. And since it's limited to 3000 copies, I might never know. So that's both my Sendron Kagura and Neptunia collections that are complete save for one game. Somehow both happen to be Vita games and are the rarest releases of their respective series. The front image shows the three main protagonists of the series sitting on some stairs, as well as Hikage and Katsuragi. Not sure why it's them specifically, but there you go. The back is laid out pretty well. There's no clutter. I like that they went with illustrations of Hamura and Asuka instead of millions of little unrecognizable screenshots. On the right it clearly shows what the LE includes, the game, a two-disc soundtrack, and DLC. Two outfits oppose said and Yumi as a playable character with her own storyline. What's really awesome is that those exact items are really in there. Imagine getting something you didn't order. The game case has a different cover than the box. This is the only game since Deep Crimson that doesn't have Yumi on the cover. Makes sense since she doesn't exist or at least is never mentioned in the first timeline, also known as the 3DS timeline. The matter of protagonists is an interesting one when it comes to Senran Kagura. I first played Senran Kagura when it came out on the 3DS. So in my mind, Asuka is the main character, followed by Homura. Ever since Yumi was introduced, she's not only replaced Homura on the covers, but even has been given center stage in some cases. I never really liked that shift in focus, not that I disliked the character. So yay, Homura on the cover. She's even on the disc. Meanwhile, for some reason, nobody talks about Miyabi. Anyways... Speaking of characters, there's more on the other side of the cover sheet. It's a bit off looking though because of how close the characters are to the spine of the case. And then there's all this dead space on the other side. I prefer the normal way around because that way the group shot can be an interesting background image when you open the case. The background image is obscured slightly by the disc and... What's this? A manual? That's right, it's right underneath the DLC info. Full color too. That's what I want to see. Thank you, Exceed. I guess you can say, that exceeded my expectations. The other item included is the soundtrack, which has an interesting landscape orientation. Hibari and Yagyu are on the cover. For some reason I get a kick out of the colors that were used on their outfits. I can't really explain why, but there you go. The outer surface is shiny cardstock and clear plastic is on the inside. The CDs show Asuka's and Hamura's advanced scroll storage technique in full action. There's also that creepy no eyes thing I keep complaining about in every Senran Kagura unboxing. At first I thought the image behind the CDs was supposed to be Neptune struggling inside a yellow garbage bag, but it's actually Hibari in a raincoat. I always like the music in Senran Kagura. There's a lot of metal kind of music, which reminds me a bit of fighting games. And of course there's some more slice of lifey and, you know, comedic style music as well for the different cutscenes. Unfortunately, I don't like the way it's mastered. It's totally brick-walled and smashed against the limiter, so that's kind of crappy. That's the limited edition. It doesn't include a lot of things, but the box looks nice, and the soundtrack has a cool and interesting non-standard shape, and that allows a bit of space to let the illustrations shine rather than being confined to a basically square shape. 
Since I got it new at almost half price, I can say that was a pretty good deal. Now that I have both the PC and PS4 versions, let's discuss the differences between them. If you want info on the gameplay, game mechanics, and things like that, check the cards on the top right for the review. That should give you all the information you need to know in that regard. The main difference between the PC and the PS4 versions is that the PS4 game is missing a game mode. Intimacy mode, specifically. It's the one where you get all grabby-grabby and pokey-pokey in the changing room. You know, every Senran Kagura game has it. Except this one here on the PS4, because that's not okay anymore after Sony's personality change. Everything else content-wise is the same on both the PS4 and PC. Of course, PS4 has a physical option while the PC doesn't. So there's that. But what about graphics and performance? To give you perspective, let me just tell you the equipment we're using here. The PS4 is a regular launch day PS4 complete with jet engine noises. And the PC is one that I built in 2012 that's been slightly upgraded over the years. Here are all the words and numbers you need to know. Intel i5-3450, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and an NVIDIA GTX 970 from Gigabyte that's slightly overclocked from the factory. And for some reason it's a meter long as well. The game runs perfectly at 60 FPS at 1080p, with all the settings at maximum, except anti-aliasing, which is turned off. More on that later. But what about the PS4? Well, I can happily confirm that the experience is almost as good. The game runs at a constant 60 FPS, both in the menus and in-game. First renewal seems to run well, even with a decent amount of enemies on screen, and also a lot of particle effects. Transformations are smooth, and so are the special attacks for the most part. I only got slowdowns in two situations. Once when doing a special attack with a lot of enemies around, but it wasn't even that bad. It's more like a brief stutter rather than the game grinding to a halt. The other instance was in the shopping arcade level at the playground. If you end up behind the trees, it slows down. I'm guessing it's because the transparency thing with the leaves, but other than that I didn't notice anything. So overall I think they did a good job getting all that optimized. I remember Estival Versus and certainly Peach Beach Splash having more noticeable slowdowns. I can happily report that you'll have a tough time distinguishing between the two games. Essentially, the PC and PS4 versions look identical if the PC version has anti-aliasing turned off. And it's often my case because it causes frame rate to fluctuate. But I still felt there was a bit of a difference. The PS4 game has this bloom effect around the characters and objects, but it doesn't seem to show up that well in the recording. Even without all the YouTube compression, and me just looking at the files on my computer, I can barely spot a difference. Even just the recording process removes detail from the videos, so it's a bit hard to see. Especially because there's a lot of movement in this game, so you can see a lot of artifacts all over the place. The way I see it is that the bloom effect on the PS4 makes the overall image look slightly softer, while on PC it's more crisp and defined. But you'll probably not see any difference here on YouTube. At this point, I think it's safe to say that the differences are almost superficial. It reminds me of how the PS4 and PC versions of Neptunia V2 looked slightly different too. So in the end, it looks like the PC and PS4 versions are almost equal in performance and looks. The main difference, of course, being that the PS4 game is missing intimacy mode. The reason for this is Sony. You probably know what I'm talking about, so I'm not going to go on about that. I prefer to avoid giving Sony my money, but the combination of a heavy discount and my desire to have the physical game in my collection to me justifies the purchase. You're going to have to decide for yourself where you stand on that issue. But that's the Senran Kagura Burst Renewal Limited Edition. I hope you enjoyed both the unboxing and graphics comparison. If you did, please like the video and maybe even subscribe. I do videos on Japanese games as well as several more mainstream video game topics. It's quite varied, which is something I do on purpose. I like to do all kinds of different videos just because I like all kinds of different things. There's also a second channel, which is a bit more focused on Japanese games. There's a few playthroughs, occasional news videos, and other non-scripted and more casual content. If you want to support the channel, you can buy merch from the merch store or become a supporter on Patreon. Check the links in the cards on the top right there or in the description. You should be able to find everything there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.